is Sunday, March 28, 2021. It's episode number 173. Should we file married filing separately? This is 39.6 Facebook and YouTube Live Finance Show. The show that teaches high earners like yourselves how to make your money work for you so you don't have to work for your money. Talk general investing, taxes, real estate, syndications, Airbnb, paying for college, paying for child care, and even the car you drive. It is tax season and we're going to do a tax episode. I see this question a lot. Should we file married filing separately as opposed to married filing jointly? Now, this is very important that we understand that once you are married, those are the only two choices you have for filing your taxes, jointly or separately. You cannot file as a single person once you are married. So that's where the marriage penalty comes into play. There is a very small marriage penalty right now with the Tax Cut and Jobs Act for the past few years. This applies to very few people and is very small. Basically, if both people have an income north of $300,000, then yeah, there can be a small marriage penalty because uh, the tax bracket for 37% kicks in at $523,000 when you are single. But if you are married, the top tax bracket kicks in at 628. So that's only like 314,000 each. So there is a very small range uh, of income that would potentially be taxed at 37% instead of 35%. And that is where the marriage, fi marriage penalty occurs. And that marriage penalty only occurs if you are in basically a small range of income and it's not very much money. I covered it in uh, I covered it in episode number 85 the non marriage penalty because um, we basically don't have a marriage penalty anymore we used to have a substantial marriage penalty with the old tax laws okay so with that aside the question is not if you can if you're filing single or married because single yes there can be a very small marriage penalty of like a few thousand dollars the question is married filing separately versus married filing jointly from a tax perspective, now I go through this really slowly in episode 20, in one of my original episodes from like two plus years ago uh, with my bead frame, and I go through it all very slowly. So please refer back to that. It's on my YouTube channel, easily findable there. But the current tax brackets are such that married filing single, separate, and married filing joint are exactly one to one. So the tax brackets for joint are exactly twice as much as the tax bracket for separate. So basically there's no difference in terms of when those tax brackets kick in. For example, I'm going to use some round numbers, but if you're filing married filing separately, you are going to get into the 10% uh, bracket at $10,000. Okay, or sorry, the, the next bracket, the 12% the bracket at $10,000. If you are married, you hit the 12% bracket at $20,000. So if you each are earning exactly that $10,000, okay, of taxable income above the standard deduction, you're going to get just to that 12% bracket when you're separate or when you're single because they are 10,000 and 20,000. The next bracket is 40,000 and 80,000, so exactly half. The next bracket is 86,000 and 173,000. Okay, again, half. And then 165,000 and 330,000. Then we have 209,000 and 418,000. And the last bracket, 37%, is 314,000 and 628,000. So they are exactly half of each other. So you're not going to get a tax advantage simply by choosing one or the other unless there's some special thing going on, okay? So the tax brackets are not different between the two. Now, let's first discuss why you would want to file separately 
and this is not regarding the actual tax dollar amount, but just why would you even want to do it separate? Let's pretend you are not, um, or let's pretend you are going through a divorce and the divorce is not final and you want your finances to be separated, for example, um, as much as possible now, even though you're not actually divorced. That is a very reasonable reason to, to married filing separately because that separates the tax liability between the two partners. One person, sorry about that. Um, one person may have more deductions and the other person may not want to worry about all the deductions the person is taking and worry about an audit and other things. So if you file completely separately, the other person's audit risk is not your audit risk and vice versa, okay? So you may end up paying more tax as a couple doing this, but it does separate the liability of the tax. And that is um, ultimately the biggest driver to consider doing this from a purely tax dollar amount, okay? Because it doesn't necessarily save you on tax dollars, but it does help decrease liability, okay? And if uh, one spouse maybe uh, have, have has a business and has a lot of deductions, and at risk for an audit, or even maybe tax evasion, okay? If the other spouse wants to protect themselves from that risk, married filing separately is a way to do that, okay? Now, there are some mathematical reasons where it could be helpful to file separately. Um, one of them is that uh, there are some deductions that come into play when, based on the adjusted gross income of the individual. So like medical care, if you have healthcare expenses that exceed 7.5% of your AGI, that amount is deductible on Schedule A. So if one person has a very low income but has a lot of healthcare expenses, then they may be able to get a sizable deduction from that. But if they were married because the other person's income gets combined, that seven and a half percent becomes a bigger number. And so uh, those healthcare expenses may no longer be deductible because they might not exceed that seven and a half percent floor. So that's one key thing. There used to be a, a 2% floor for um, non-reimbursed employee expenses, 2% of uh, adjusted gross income, but that doesn't exist anymore in the current tax law. So that's not an issue. So it's really medical expenses, but uh, that doesn't apply to most people, but it certainly can as you're older and your income is lower and your healthcare expenses are particularly, are, are higher. Now, the biggest reason for most people who are watching this, for them to consider doing married filing separately has nothing to do with the actual tax dollars that you are going to pay when you're filing your taxes. It is strictly because one, of the people in particular has student loans and you're trying to do married filing separately so that the other person's higher income does not get included on your tax return so that when you're filing for your income-based repayment option, the amount that you have to pay per month based on income is only based on your income not based on your spouse's income. So if, for example, you have two doctor family and one of them is still in training and earning 60 or 70,000 per year, and the other is an attending making 300, 400 or north of that per year, you might not want to have that much higher income included on your tax return, especially if you're planning to go for public service loan forgiveness. So let's pretend that person who's in training is planning to stay at a nonprofit institution and say in academia, they could potentially report just their $60,000 a year income, have a very small loan payment per year, okay? And then continue that for a while and then they're gonna be in a nonprofit institution, get PSLF and all of that savings by having a smaller payment is never due, it just disappears, that's forgiven, okay? Now, this gets further complicated because 
it definitely can save you money in your student loan payments. However, if you're doing married filing separately and one has a big income and one has a small income, that person with the big income potentially is now gonna be paying a lot more tax because they could be getting bumped up to a higher tax bracket and they really want to have access to those lower tax brackets that the lower income spouse has. So married filing jointly would decrease their tax bill, but it could increase the student loan payment as income based for the person with the lower income. So you have to look at these two things together, not separately, and this is where it gets complicated. So you can run your numbers from a tax perspective. If you're doing like TurboTax or whatever, you do all of your taxes and you run it once as separately and once as joint and look at the total amount of tax liability you have between the two of you. Then you look at what your income base or payment would be in each situation if you file jointly or if you file separately based on those numbers. And those formulas are readily available and you can calculate how much your monthly payment would go up if, if you did that. And so just look at over the course of a year, how much increase would I have potentially in my student loan payment as joint and how much tax savings would I have as joint? Okay, and compare one to the other. Now, um, another thing, uh, there are a lot of disadvantages of married filing separately. Okay, so not just from the tax perspective, because you're already probably paying more tax if you file separately. There are, in addition, multiple things you lose as a benefit once you file separately. For example, um, there are a lot, there's a long list of, of credits that you can no longer take once you do married filing separate. So the earned income credit, the child tax credit, um, you can get that, but only half as much. The child and dependent care credit, you lose the adoption credit. Oh, sorry, the child and dependent care credit, you get a, a potentially a partial credit if the spouses live separately. The adoption credit you lose, um, then there are education credits, like the American Opportunities, uh, American Opportunity, Lifetime Learning Credit, and the Student Loan Interest Deduction and Tuition and Fees Deduction. Assuming you are eligible to take those, you lose those. Um, also, the traditional IRA deduction phase out is lower. It's based on um, zero to $10,000 um, instead of what it would be without married filing uh, separately. So um, you lose a number of credits and those credits are very valuable because those are one for one. One dollar of a credit saves you one dollar in tax. So in general, you with the current tax bracket system where the married filing joint and married filing separate are exactly half of each other or two times each other, you are basically never going to get a tax advantage strictly by choosing separate over the other unless there are special circumstances like high deductions on one side that are like medical care. Notably, um, I, I had previously thought, well, if one person itemizes and takes all these itemized on one side and the other person takes the standard deduction, which is half as much per person, then maybe that would help you save, but you're not allowed to take the standard deduction for one person if the other person is itemizing. So if one person itemizes, both people have to itemize. Um, if one person takes a standard deduction, both people have to take the standard deduction. And so you can't just like shove all the deductions to one person and take a, a big deduction from one side and take the standard on the other side. That doesn't work. Um, so you have to know how the other person is filing with respect to itemized deductions, even if you're doing married filing separately. Okay, so you do absolutely need to know that. So it's not like you can just, for example, if you're going through a divorce, you can't just let one person do their taxes and you do yours without having that information at hand. Um, maybe get the same accountant so that at least uh, that information is known, but that information has to pair up between the two. All right. Um, that should be it. Um, for most all people, again, the primary benefit to married filing separately is if you're doing pay as you earn, income based or payment, 
and you are going for public service loan forgiveness because then that extra loan payment savings will not actually have to be due in the future. All right, that's it for tonight. Episode number 173. This episode is brought to you by Marriage Medicine, Marriage, and Money podcast. Um, Kate was on the Leverage and Growth Summit today live with Peter Kim. That was pretty exciting. Her podcast is going great, and she is launching her program soon. Uh, so please uh, listen and check out her Facebook group, Edit Mer Medicine, Marriage, and Money uh, on Facebook and see everything going on if you are interested. Uh, we also have our multifamily masterclass. Uh, that we are launching and I need to send out an email to everybody about this uh, once I get my email list updated because I can't keep up with all of the emails. All right. Um, that is it for episode number 173. Have a great Sunday. Happy tax season.